Good day, my name is Joe, one half of Board Games for Two. Today, let's take a look at our board game collection. Come along. We have a couple different shelves throughout our house. Let's start off and let's go to the top of this one where we have Betrayal House on the Hill, a really fun party game we like to, uh, to bring out, especially during that October time frame. Uh, this War of Mine, Board Games for One uh, recommended. He had a great playthrough on his channel, really enjoyed this. It's kind of like a solo experience. The two player wasn't as good about scrounging around and scavenging. Eldritch Horror, well, that was one of our first board games we bought, a big cooperative game uh, that doesn't quite hit the table as much uh, because really the, the dice rolls kind of get under my skin a little bit. Uh, the Alchemist, one of my favorite games of deduction, uh, mixing two potions together. It does need an app, but a really fun just potion crafting uh, little game. Uh, Machi Koro, a very, very easy game to get to the table to teach a very good intro board game a grand austria hotel doesn't quite hit the table too often um just kind of a dry euro to me and then we have photosynthesis wrapping up the top table which is a, a fun abstract game about um, sun hitting trees and uh, growing trees doesn't hit the table too often and i don't know maybe it's overstated it's welcome a little bit Next, we'll move down a shelf. We have some fine sand. That's one of the games I got from a BGG con. Haven't opened it yet. Maybe that'll be on the table soon. Some Dice Throne, Dads and Dice. Uh, two of my favorite people love Dice Throne on their channel. Uh, we did want to try out one pack for us, and it was an interesting game, but I don't know if it's the whole collection is needed for us. Uh, look at the stars, a nice roll and write. Uh, Lightspeed Arena, just a quick game about um, about shooting other people's bases and using an app to kind of do the resolution of the game. Really neat. Through the Ages, one of the, the original games in our collection about building your civilization and a really neat game that you don't really see too much anymore, but just a, a great concept, especially for two players, not a whole lot of downtime for two. Uh, Lords of Waterdeep, one of our original board games as well. Worker placement, D&D-esque, but really just big worker placement, uh, building or putting different buildings on the side. It's a lot of fun. Robinson Crusoe doesn't hit the table too often, but nice cooperative game, a very, very hard survival game. And then we come out with Targi, the two-player game where you really need to look at your, your X and Y axis, see where they cross, do that action. Super neat game. Uh, Viticulture and Viticulture World. Um, just nice overall worker placement games. Uh, just a really neat theme uh, in these two. Didn't quite enjoy Viticulture World as much as Viticulture, but uh, <laughs> we really do enjoy Viticulture. Uh, Dice Hospital. Uh, this was an interesting game about uh, treating patients, making sure that they uh, they don't reach zero and perish and just try to uh, cure the patients. And then Chronicles of Crime, something that my wife and I really had a good time uh, playing uh, the, this game. And it's like the Sherlock Holmes uh, taking, you know, using the app, being able just to see. It, it, it was just really neat. We really enjoyed Chronicles of Crime. And let's move on to some of our middle shelves. Welcome to the moon. Roll and write, but a campaign roll and write. This has been a lot of fun. We've really enjoyed this one, and especially um, in a larger group, not a lot of downtime. A really fun game to play. New York Zoo, a polynomio. Maybe we've outgrown this one a little bit, but still a really nice intro, good game. Then we go on to Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Oh, we really enjoyed this. We played the entire thing, have the expansion, and just a really nice, you know, Dominion-esque kind of boss battling um, just card game in the Harry Potter universe. Splendor Duel. Uh, it's a nice, easy version of Splendor, but I think the, the original box of Splendor probably would be better than Splendor Duel, but this is a, a decent little game. Then we go on to Hegemony. 
Now this game is so much fun. Um, my wife loves this at two. I think it's decent at two, but I play with dads and dice and with three using the, the working middle and uh, capitalist class. This was a lot, a lot of fun. Really love um, hegemony. Another one of my wife's favorites is Obsession, the Pride and Prejudice, Jane Austen feel about, you know, just, just building up your manner and making sure that you have the most prestige throughout the game. A lot of fun. Sleeping Gods, we just got done with, with this one with our first playthrough. Big, big, big campaign game, but a lot of exploring, a lot of fun. Seven Wonders. This is one of my favorite games. Does it get played a whole lot because it's, you know, with my wife and I, uh, two players just doesn't, you can't play Seven Wonders. But this game is so much fun, especially at the four to five, maybe in the six player count, just being able to pass car, just a lot of, lot of fun. And on this shelf too, we have the recent Kickstarter dog park, and then we have Camel Up. Camel Up is just a fun uh, game about, you know, betting on camels. Who would, who would think that that would be a board game that would be so much fun? They stack on each other. It's a really neat game. Then Quacks of Quedlinburg doesn't quite hit the table as much as it, it used to, you know, with Distilled, First in Flight, a lot of these other kind of push your luck games uh, that are, you know, just as good as Quacks. Then we have some of our bottom shelf here with Cascadia, one of the, the best gateway games that, that there is. Very easy to teach. Even I taught my parents and they had a good time uh, with this game. Um, uh, Courtesans, Royal Turmoil, uh, just some, some smaller games in here, A uh, Fox in the Forest. Hanabi the Mind, just some kind of filler type games. Uh, Canopy, we really enjoyed uh, building out the trees. Then we come into Patchwork. Just a great, really tight game about spending buttons and button management. A really good two-player game. Res Arcana, another great two-player game. Um, just a tight resource management. Uh, Vault Wars, which I'm probably the one of the only people in the world that enjoy Vault Wars. It's kind of like uh, Storage Wars. Uh, Zoo King, just a lot of fun in this little card game. We've got an Altiplano, you know, the successor to Orleans. Just a lot of, of bag building, and I love bag building. Terraforming Mars, just a classic, classic game. Uh, for us, you know, Arc Nova's kind of jumped it a little bit, just from the tableau building and the, the engine management. Then we go on to Star Wars Rebellion. One of my favorite games, especially for two, just an overall great game. Very thematic, very large, and big table presence. And then there's this part of the house that not a whole lot of people see <laughs> near our garage over here. But there's some good games in here. So we have Arkham Horror, uh, the card game. Now, this isn't my favorite game, but we do have a lot of it. But I appreciate that other people uh, like that kind of exploration game. Out of all the living card games, this is probably my least favorite, but a good one nonetheless. Uh, we have uh, Star Wars Unlimited up here, which we need to send back because we got two of the same uh, Luke deck and just some odds and ends. There's some pieces we, we couldn't bear to throw away, some metal coins, Star Realms, our sleeves, uh, Dice Masters, we used to play that a lot. And then one of my favorite, Star Wars Armada. We have a lot of stuff for Star Wars Armada. I really like this game. I think it's a really neat uh, table presence as well. Really unique building uh, your, your ships beforehand and then bring them to the table. However, if you don't have a miniatures uh, partner uh, like me, this doesn't hit the table too often. And I won't dwell on this one too long, but this is the uh, the Warhammer collection. Uh, I've painted painted all these. This is a collection over 25 years. So yes, there's probably a lot of money on the wall, but 25 years of collecting, painting, and just a tabletop hobby, which really got me in to board gaming. 
Then we'll move on to, uh, to this. I know it's a little bit tougher to see, but we have our Everdell collection, uh, including Far Shore. And we do have Mistwood, the, the two-player expansion uh, for Everdell. A, uh, a really interesting kind of adds that dummy player uh, into a game that needs a little bit of boost at the two-player mark. Then we go into my uh, Lasarda collection. Now I only have three, uh, starting with, well, unfortunately my least favorite, uh, Kanban EV. This one didn't quite hit for me, and it was a lot of uh, rules overhead, especially for two. I didn't quite get the feel of, of building the cars like I thought I would. Then we go into, well, one of my favorite games, The Gallerist, where you'll be taking people into your into your lobby, uh, selling art to them, expanding the uh, the influence of artists. Just a lot of fun. A two-player, uh, it's a little bit rougher because as you uh, build up an artist, if the other person has it, you're just building each other up. It's a little bit odd at two players, but a really thematic and fun game. Then we move on to Lisboa, which is a very thematic game, but a very large game. So those three games are very neat. We like them. Um, We've played them all. Uh, we don't quite uh, enjoy them as much because they're just really tough to get to the table. Then we go on to Mechs and Minions. Just a lot of fun in a box, a lot of craziness, a lot of randomness. Um, you never know quite what's going to happen. You know, on your turn, you're going to be spinning, shooting stuff. That's a neat little campaign. Then we go on to Mage Wars. This is the game that I love to play with Dads and Dice. Uh, uh, member Devin. This is the game that for us just being able to open a spell book and play it. Uh, we have very different play styles. He likes you know the green style, the build up your board style, and I'm about the the fast and kill your stuff in your face style. So you can get all that in Mage Wars and it's just a lot of fun. Uh, doing that, but it's a little bit tougher to get to the table because you have to construct the deck and it does take a little while for what the game is. Stardew Valley, the board game, one of our most favorite cooperative games, relaxing. We'll put on the Stardew Valley soundtrack, play this game, and just have a good time accomplishing grandpa's goals. And then we have Atiwa, game about fruit bats. Um, it felt a little samey after a few playthroughs, but we still really enjoy this. The Wolves, one of my wife's favorite games about, you know, the running with your pack, growing your pack, expanding your dens all over the place. Really big area control. Then we go into our little parks collection. Um, we've, we brought parks to, um, two vacations with us and it's just a lot of fun a good traveling game and just a good all-around game then we have our wingspan collection where i think we have the wingspan asia and our our wingspan uh, collection over here then we round out uh, this area with Le Havre and New Bedford, both great games. Le Havre, one of the games that I had a, just a blast playing with Paul um, from Dads and Dice, and I love playing this game with my wife. Works super well with two, really enjoy Le Havre. And then we have one little other section down here of games that, well, we really enjoy. Forest Shuffle, just a great uh, placing trees, placing animals on top, uh, plants down below, uh, birds on top of the trees. Really neat game. Seven Wonders Duel, one of our favorite quick games of, of drafting different cards. A lot of fun. Roll Camera, a great cooperative game about building a a random movie, a crazy movie. Who knows what you're going to get by the end. A forbidden Desert. Just a nice tile laying, sands blowing kind of game, and hopefully you can get a reprieve. And then Arc Nova, one of our favorite games with the Marine Worlds expansion. Just a, a nice large game, tableau building, zoo building type of game. We really enjoy Arc Nova. All right, then we're going to move to one of the bedrooms back here. We have Pathfinder, the adventure card game, uh, Devastation of Indines, one of the, the most exciting, like, fighting kind of, you know, games where you choose two cards, really one-on-one -on -one combat. Um, Thunderstone Quest, kind of a neat deck-building game, but 
uh, not the most longevity. Um, then we go into our Mythos Tales and Sherlock Holmes. Both of these games use game books. You're trying to solve mysteries in both of these, with Mythos being a pretty interesting game to me. Uh, Marvel Dagger, uh, this was a big flop for us. Uh, really did not enjoy this. Uh, Honey Buzz, we'll get to the table uh, pretty soon. Then we have the Spirit Island collection. The four boxes of Spirit Island. We have everything Spirit Island. This game is amazing and I love, I love playing this game. We have our Marvel Champions box. We have all, all seven uh, campaigns for it. Love getting this one out. Can't wait to get the new campaign to the table. Then we have our, the stuff you can't see down here because it's so black because it's Kingdom Death. Uh, I can't quite see, see how it goes, but we have a whole shelf just dedicated to Kingdom Death. Warhammer Quest, kind of an older uh, style game for Fantasy Flight. Settlers of Catan, classic. And then we're going to move on to over here, where we have Sky Tear Horde. Uh, this was one of my least favorite games of 2023. Really did not enjoy that. And the one below it, Mr. President, uh, is the exact opposite. One of my favorite games of 2023. Mr. President, one of the best solo games I've ever played. However, it's super massive. <laughs> so we have our shelves of of things we need to play. First Martians, haven't played in a while. Woodcraft, my wife really liked that. A uh, really neat system of how, uh, how like the worker placement kind of works. Really neat game. And a couple games we really want to get to the table. We played Earth. Earth and Terraforming Mars, kind of similar to us, uh, tableau building style. Uh, We'll move on to evacuation. I wanted this game to be so much better than it was about transferring people from the old planet to the new planet. Just didn't quite hit for us. Mage Knight, one of the greatest uh, solo games as well. You know, Mr. President, Mage Knight deserved to be on this uh, the same shelf. Beer and Bread, a little game about, well, um, bread and beer. I don't know much, much more to say about that. Uh, Beyond the Sun. This is one of the games that we played at our first convention with Dads and Dice, and I just love this game. Uh, I think there's an expansion to it, but just playing this one, board looks boring, gameplay really good compared er, um, to me. Uh, we got Frostpunk, a very hard survival game. <laughs> love this game. Then down here we have our Race Formula 90. I'm really big into F1 and racing, and this really fills the, uh, the board game niche of racing and formula one and then we'll transition to another room where we just finished up our play of Mythwin. we really enjoyed it but i wish there was just a little bit more player interaction maybe the expansion helps out with that one uh, distilled just a fun game where there is a little bit of luck as you remove the the head and the bottom of you know the distilled uh, alcohol and hopefully you're left with something good really enjoyed that one uh, Sky Team, such a such an interesting two-player game where you're just trying to balance a plane, not get out of whack. Make there there's varying difficulty, there's progression for the game. I uh, really enjoyed Sky Team. A couple other games down here, uh, Bark Ant Avenue, uh, Ransom Notes, which we haven't got to the table yet, and then we have War of the Ring with the new expansion that I can't wait to bust out, uh, The Kings of Middle Earth. Really enjoy this game. It's huge, expansive. It's a Star Wars Rebellion, except in the, uh, the Lord of the Rings universe. Unfortunately, kind of hard to get to the table because it takes such a long time to play. First in Flight, we just did our review of those. Have a few games we haven't played yet in um, Aqua Abduction. We did play the Fox Experiment. It's kind of a neat little game about breeding foxes. Uh, Wormspan, we still haven't busted this out. You know, may replace Wingspan, may not. We'll see when we when we open it up. Animals of Baker Street, such an uh, a nice little kid-friendly version of Sherlock Consulting Detective. We really enjoyed the Animals of Baker Street. But we have some Lego, as you've seen through some of these pictures and things, that we really enjoy just the Lego hobby and sometimes just away from screen time. The Art Project, a nice little game about stealing back art from some thieves. 
And then we have our big version of clinic. Just, uh, we really enjoyed the methodical building of a hospital and all the different modules you can play and add. Just, it has so much depth and so much thought about running a hospital. Really neat game, a little bit tough to get to the table. Then in one of the back closets here, we have two of my favorite games, Oathsworn, as you can see, really liked the game, uh, almost finished it, but would play again. Just a great, great campaign game. It's going to take a little bit, but the story is pretty good. Then we have Battle Masters. I'm pretty sure this game is from 1993. This was the original board game. This, this predated uh, my Warhammer and the miniature love on the hobby. You have to play on the floor. It's like a six by six floor mat and you're moving these big units around. Battle Masters, one of my first loves and what got me into board gaming. Then we'll move on to our Calyx shelf in the back where we start off with Eleven, a, a soccer simulation kind of game. It's a lot of fun, a little bit finicky because you don't quite know uh, who you're going to be facing, but a, an interesting game for soccer fans uh, or football fans if you're in Europe. Uh, Alpenglow, a neat little ski resort building game. Uh, Era. Era is a game that isn't for everybody, but you're building out these towns. It's just kind of, it's a interesting, you know, polynomio-esque game where you're trying to score the most points and really build your castle. Uh, kind of a neat, interesting game. Then we go on to three of my favorites. The fourth will be played... Uh, uh, this weekend in Hexplore It. These games are huge. These games are like campaigns in a box. Just a fantastic game for one to six players. Um, really interesting, good storytelling. Then we move on to Lord of the Rings, the card game. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, more than Arkham Horror, but less than uh, Marvel Champions, but really a good uh, LCG nonetheless. Then we move on to Fog of Love, which I really, um, I kind of eased up on a little bit because it's a good two-player game, or it's a two-player game uh, as you're trying to make sure the relationship works between two people. Pursuit of Happiness. Uh, I always kind of bust this one out because I think it's fun to upgrade your hobbies, to see how different uh, lives kind of go. Just an interesting game. Stockpile, one of the greatest three to four player games uh, that you can play as a party style. It's actually two to five, but three to four is really the sweet spot as you want different stocks to go up and different stocks to crash. Just a lot of fun in this game. Fresco, one of our original games that that we have in our collection about painting <laughs> painting a fresco painting the top of you know the Sistine Chapel or something is the interesting uh, game over here then we have the final girl collection um, really enjoy these really going to get these to the table and start uh, final girl Fridays uh, back up one of these days to move on to villagers um, Guild of Merchant Explorers uh, didn't quite hit for me a little bit, um, not enough thinking for me. And then the Skate Summer, just a nice Tony Hawk style game. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, where you're really trying to balance uh, all your moves. This is a really neat game. Uh, Zapotec, mine is in Shrink, but Dad's and Dice uh, is not, not quite a game for me, a little bit too tight, and the game ended before it got going. Uh, Dojo Kun, this is one of those games where you're fighting, but you're chunking a whole bunch of dice and, you know, uh, uh, grapples and blocks and kicks and punches, all while trying to take out the opponent and win the tournament. Uh, dice Forge, really neat game about, you know, forging different dice, putting different pips on different dice. Flamecraft, once again, uh, kind of a one of those games that we've we've eased up on a little bit, but we really just enjoy you know the the theme of this game. So let's keep it on uh, going over here. I know this is going to be a little bit tougher to see. Uh, Forever Home, a nice um, you know polynomial about uh, making sure dogs have homes. Combat. Uh, Compass Games, my first big war game. This was super interesting. Uh, <laughs> I did enjoy that one, though the rules for line of sight were a little bit uh, cumbersome. And then we go into Super Club, another soccer game. This one is kind of head-to-head -head on 
on how you you fight the opponent or how you try to beat the opponents in the your football club and try to get the best recruits you can and then we go on to millennium blades uh just a fun uh deck like uh um magic the gathering type game except you're trying to to beat other magic it's this one is like a tcg in a box and we really like that game uh moving up from there a uh, cage match azul sheriff um, Turing Machine. Turing Machine is a great game when you want a little bit of thought in your games. Star Wars, a deck building game. We really enjoyed this one. Uh, Lost Runes of Arnak. Not really my favorite game, but it, it's a it's a decent game um, nonetheless. And a lot of people do like uh, Lost Runes of Arnak, especially with the expansion. Tapestry we haven't played in a while. Uh, Hunger Games. This was one of our games we bought from Target or something. Just a nice little game but at the at the end of the game if your name gets drawn you lose uh, the colonists one of my favorite games uh, you start a small colony you slowly grow it out and you slowly grow your homestead and your area out this is a fantastic game not for everybody because it's a long game too but a really fun game castles of burgundy doesn't hit the table too much but a really nice solid game as well we have innovation deluxe and the Lord of the Rings expansions over here. And to kind of round out these, we have some of the, the Hadrian's Wall, really fun roll and write that we really enjoy. Uh, Under Falling Skies, a nice solo game. Feels like Independence Day when you play it. Planet Fall, just a good kind of card drafting game about balancing out resources. A Lord of the Rings adventure book game, a game you can probably finish in a weekend, but a really nice, a simple, easy game to play, a little hand management. Then Halls of Hegra, a solo, intense game where you are going to be defending as Norwegian soldiers against the Germans. Just a really interesting, really escalating game. Then we finally get into Imperium. So these games are great. I would play these solo any day. I love having all these. I love the, the artwork and all the direction of these games. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Just wanted to give you like a tour of who are we, what kind of games we like, which ones we don't, which ones we have in the collections, which one we don't, and just an overall view of where we come from and our views on the reviews. We just like to play games unplugged for a while, and this is our hobby. So I know everybody else has, has the hobbies they enjoy, but this is our hobby. I love sharing this hobby, and I look forward to sharing this with you guys and any feedback, and I'd like to see some of y'all's collections. So thank you guys very much uh, for watching, and until next time.